Our study is about the influence of diabetes on coronary artery bypass graft patency. So the motivation behind this study was that we know from the landmark Freedom trial that coronary surgery is better than PCI in patients with diabetes. However, the outcomes after coronary surgery in diabetics are not as good as the outcomes in non-diabetics. We know from other studies that the worst outcomes of PCI in diabetic patients are due to worse stent patency. However, little is known about the influence of diabetes on the bypass graft patency. So we did a study to look at this, and our hypothesis was that because uh, coronary sten artery stenosis in diabetic patients is much more severe than that in non-diabetic patients, we hypothesized that the stenosis in the bypass grafts will also be much more severe than, that, than in non-diabetic patients. The thing is that diabetes is a major, major risk factor and is an independent risk factor for atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis is the mechanism by which coronary arteries get clogged and bypass grafts can get clogged as well. And if they you know, get clogged and get occluded, you know, that kind of compromises the flow going to the heart after sure. coronary surgery. What we did was we have a large uh, database maintained at the Cleveland Clinic. We did extensive data mining and we identified around 57,000 patients who had done primary isolated cabbage at the Cleveland Clinic mm -hmm. from 1972 to 2011. To be included in the study, the patient had to have at least one post-operative angiogram and detailed uh, information about their bypass graft stenosis. So patients who met the inclusion criteria were around 1,300 diabetic patients and around 10,000 non-diabetic patients. And we studied like 20,000 saphenous vein grafts and 8,000 internal thoracic artery grafts. The major finding for our study, which really surprised us because it was contrary to our hypothesis, was that diabetes was not associated with worse graft patency. So the bypass patency rates, even 20 years after surgery, were similar in diabetic and non-diabetic patients. And even 20 years, and this was true for like both internal thoracic artery grafts and saphenous vein grafts, at 20 years, uh, the atrial graft patency for both diabetic and non-diabetic patients was around 95%. And for saphenous vein graft, it was around 35% for both diabetic and non-diabetic patients. So they were similar in the two patient populations, which was kind of interesting because we were expecting otherwise. Our hypothesis was be, uh, based on the fact, because we know from many studies, that stenosis in the coronary arteries of diabetic patients is much more severe. So we expected that the stenosis in their coronary artery bypass graft in the long run, which will also be much more severe than that in the non-diabetic patients, but that uh, doesn't appear to be so. That's pretty good for the diabetic patients because we know that 40% of all patients undergoing coronary surgery are now diabetics. In fact, at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, the proportion of diabetic patients increased from 5% in the 1970s to like 40% in, uh, in 2010 over the last four decades. And you know that diabetes is a growing epidemic and it's a risk factor for coronary artery disease. So more and more patients uh, develop coronary artery disease if they are Di diabetic patients and then they undergo coronary revascularization and we know from the freedom trial that cabbage is a better option for them if they have a uh, multivessel disease uh, this study shows that uh, coronary surgery is as effective in diabetic patients as in non-diabetic patients because uh, the effectiveness of coronary surgery is directly related uh, to the bypass graft patency and because the patency is similar in diabetic and non-diabetic patients, the procedure is equally effective in both patients. So it's uh, good news for the diabetic patients that, you know, uh, the diabetes does not affect the long-term bypass graft patency. For the patients and for the clinicians, uh, it is important to know that the worst outcomes uh, of coronary surgery uh, in diabetic patients are not related to worse graft patency. So they may be related to the diabetic patients having more comorbidities, they have more cardiac and non-cardiac comorbidities, and that may be the reason that you know, uh, coronary surgery outcomes are worse in diabetic patients. So clinicians should focus towards better management of their cardiac and non-cardiac comorbidities after coronary surgery so that they get the long-term survival benefit after their uh, surgery is done. And for the surgeon it means that they should know that the ITA graft patency in diabetic patients is as good 
as a non-diabetic patient, uh, we, we find in our study that uh, it was 95% for full diabetic and non-diabetic patients at 20 years after surgery. So use of IT grafts should be maximized in all patients undergoing coronary surgery, both diabetic and non-diabetic uh, patients. And this means uh, that bilateral IT grafting should be done whenever feasible in all patients because coronary surgery is done as a long-term solution to the problem. So if you give bypass grafts who have longer patency, uh, good patency in the long run, well, the patients will do well. Like uh, every study, this uh, study also answered some questions, but also gave rise to some more questions. <laughs> so we now know that uh, diabetes does not influence ID and saphenous uh, vein graft patency, but what about other conduits that we use, like for example, radial artery grafts, inferior epigastric arteries. Uh, we are now working to find out what is the influence of diabetes on, uh, you know, uh, patency of those conduits and whether they are as good uh, as internal thoracic artery grafts. The other thing is that we know that IGA graft patency remains stable over time, whereas saphenous vein graft patency uh, decreases uh, progressively over time. So efforts should be made to identify strategies that can improve the patency of saphenous vein grafts because they are still one of the most commonly used bypass grafts in coronary surgery. And if we have to improve the outcomes of our patients, the long-term outcomes, uh, we have to pay some attention there as well.